Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is part two, working on a five inch gauge steam locomotive using power tools. Is this a power tool? It's a steam cleaner. It's a very small steam cleaner and the good thing about it is, unless you're stupid enough to put your hand right up against the nozzle, you can actually steam clean your hands as well. But enough of this frivolity, it's time to get down to some real work. Look at the state of the cab. This is what the engine looked like when I first saw it and I thought to myself, is this some kind of a joke, or are they just testing me to see if I've got enough patience to be able to do the job? And luckily I have. After working in my recording studio for many years, recording all types of music, played by some people who should not really be allowed to play music, yes, I have plenty of patience. So this is nothing. Looking at some of the comments that I received after I published the last video, this is not a career move, it's not a career change, I'm doing this so that I can make videos for the channel. And from some points of view, it's not that useful. It's just showing people what it's like to work in a professional workshop, as opposed to my modest home workshop. But I do like to use machines and processes that are available to the beginner. The steam workshop is different to my home workshop in many ways. It's much larger, it's a good bit tidier, and the steam workshop is designed so that several people can work on different sizes of steam locomotives at the same time. In this clip I'm using the steam cleaner to clean this part of the engine. This is the roof, the cab, the spectacle plate and the water tank all in one unit. By using a small amount of imagination you can see how good this engine must have looked when it was first built. When I look closely at this assembly, the roof, the cab, the spectacle plate and the water tank, it's very well made indeed. So it's well worth taking the time to renovate it properly. It's very greasy underneath, so in this clip I'm applying some more degreaser to it and blasting it off with the steam cleaner. To save some time in the video, I'm now going to speed it up. Ah, that's better. The dirt and grime is coming off much faster now. After finishing the steam cleaning, I put the assembly on one side to dry, and then I move back to the workbench to start the work on the wheels. I'm using a small flapper wheel in a Dremel electric drill. But all I'm doing is removing the paint from the balance weight part of the casting because this is quite rusty. Most of the red paint on the spokes is okay, so I may as well leave this because it'll act as a primer for another coat on top. These flapper wheels are quite useful for this job because they don't damage the metal, they don't dig in, they just remove loose paint and rust. A quick health and safety warning, it's most important to wear eye protection and a breathing mask when doing a job like this. Because don't forget, some paints used to have lead in them, and it's not a good idea to breathe this in. Many years ago, when I was asking my father, what is lead poisoning, Dad? He said, oh, rubbish, he said, it's an old army term for people getting shot, because the bullets are made out of lead. Usually my father was right about most things, but not in this case. Lead poisoning is quite a serious matter. Take a look at this. This is the other water tank and cab side assembly. Look at the difference between the one on the right and the one on the left. And the reason for this is that Dave, who's one of the members of the team at Steam Workshop, took the first part of the cab assembly and put it into a bead blasting machine. And this allows you to take the part back to bare metal. And here it is, the bead blasting machine. I'm going to buy one like this for my home workshop. At the moment though I don't have the space because I have some stage lights in flight cases in a certain area of the workshop. But I'm going to sell these and once I've cleared the space a bead blasting machine is going to go in there. Just look at the result. The part on the right is the one that Dave did a few days ago and on the left is the part that I've just done. It's still a bit on the dusty side. I really enjoyed doing this, it's the most satisfying thing I think I've done for a long time. I'm no expert on bead blasting machines, but the principle is that the machine blasts a stream of beads of glass at the work. And this not only completely removes the paint, it removes rust as well. So I also used it on the connecting rods and the rest of the valve gear. If you watched the last episode, you will notice that the coupling rods were done by hand in the vise. As these connecting rods are tapered, the more difficult to hold in the vise, so I thought it would be a good idea to use the bead blasting machine for starters. I will go over them with some emery cloth, because the bead blasted finish is not ideal. That is, unless I was going to paint the rods, in which case it's a perfect finish for painting. The rod that connects from the return crank 
to the expansion link I can't put in the bead blasting machine because it has a ball race in it. The ball race is serviceable but if I put it in the bead blasting machine it would cease to be serviceable because the fine particles of glass get everywhere. So I'm doing this by hand but I'm using the flapper wheel so it's a half and half. It's a machine tool but as you can see it's applied to the work by hand. As I said earlier, these small flapper wheels are ideal for this job because they're not too brutal. They remove the rust and the grime, but they don't dig into the metal too badly. After I published the last video, I received quite a few comments from viewers recommending rust removal compounds. The only trouble is a lot of these rust removing compounds change the ferric oxide to another kind of oxide, and I don't think there's any in the workshop anyway. How's this for a steam themed fidget spinner? These fidget spinners that you give to kids who have got ADHD. Well, I've got ADHD, adult ADHD, so I'm going to sit and spin this for a while. No, I don't feel any different, so I think I'll just put this in the box. It's nice and clean now. The steam you can see, by the way, is not from a machine tool. It's from my cup of tea that is sat at the side of the box. And once again, my thanks go to Dave for making the tea. Dave makes lovely tea. This, by the way, is not Dave's tea. This is some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, in a plastic box. And this horrible looking item is the mechanical lubricator. So it's in there to be degreased, as well as to have its paint removed. And now it's time to clean up the wheels. In this beautiful, almost new Harrison lathe. Even the paint on the tailstock isn't scratched. You can see the principle. I put the outside jaws in the three jaw chuck clamp the tread of the wheel in the three-jaw chuck, then I use the live center at the tailstock end to keep everything in line. In this clip you can clearly see what I'm doing. I'm using a piece of 100 grit emery cloth wrapped around a piece of wood. Then all I have to do is press the emery cloth against the cast iron parts of the wheel as the wheel is spinning. And this is quite safe as you notice my hands are nowhere near the wheels. The wheels would be quite dangerous if my hands were near them because they have a crank pin spinning round as well. And as you can see in the video, or can't see, the crank pin is invisible because it's spinning so fast. If your hand was near the wheel, there's a good chance that you could whack your finger with part of the crank pin, which would hurt. Common sense prevails, and it's part of the health and safety process. Cleaning cast iron locomotive wheels in a lathe like this is ideal. Not only do you get rid of all the rust and grime, you get the right kind of finish on the cast iron. Cleaning up the rear set of wheels requires a different approach. You can't clamp one of the wheels by the tread in the three-jaw chuck because the crank pin is too long to allow this to happen. As you can see here, I replaced the original jaws in the chuck and now I have a sharp pointed centre held in the chuck jaws. And all I have to do is locate one of the centres in the centre hole in the axle and the chuck end and the other centre hole in the axle engages with the live centre in the tailstock end, the chuck jaws drive the wheel round using the crank pin. And once again, in exactly the same way as I cleaned up the front pair of wheels, I'm using the same method with the length of emery cloth wrapped round the wood to clean up the rear pair of wheels. This is an alternative method for cleaning up the tread of the wheel. Just use the length of emery cloth, but be very careful and always turn off the lathe before threading the emery cloth into position. Then turn the lathe on. Or you can fold the emery cloth like this and use it at this thickness on top of the tread. Either way, fingers are kept well clear of the revolving part of the work. I'm not going to show the cleaning up of the other side of the wheel, but it's pretty similar to doing this. The centre part of the wheels, including the crank web, were cleaned up by hand using a piece of emery cloth. That's about it for this episode. I think I'll be going into Steam Workshop one day a week, so I should be able to get enough footage for maybe two videos on a weekly basis. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.